I'd like to show you how we convert the wiring that comes standard on these semis to what ultimately is going to be required with our fifth wheel trailers. It's different and I'll show you the solution that exists in the market to solve that problem. I've set up on my bench a bit of a scenario to explain how we need to do some of this wiring conversion. On the truck side we have three wires that we have to do a conversion on. We have a single red wire that provides our brake signal, a green and a yellow that do our signal lights for left and right. On the trailer side, we have only two wires. They, the uh, RV standard is that they combine the brake and the signal into one wire. So we have to have something in between here that does this conversion for us. And the answer is this. It's a jackalope. This has been designed by Henry Schmidt and he's done an incredible job of creating a very high quality device that's going to uh, do this conversion for us. He calls it the jackalope. If you're interested, look at ET Products. ETHitch.com is Henry's website. What I want to show you is how we use this. Off the truck, off the semi, there is a different connector. On the back of the truck you're going to find it's a round connector. It looks similar but each of the pins are circular. And what we need to do is we have to convert this along with our wiring challenge to what we're all familiar with the seven blade RV connector. Now, the, I'll mention this connector while I have it in my hand. The one that I like to use, uh, I've standardized on, is made by Hopkins. Uh, there's lots out there. This one has a three-year warranty. It's a very good quality one. What I like about them is the lid is really stiff. The spring that's on here is really strong. And as well, they've got a really nice gasket on the inside that keeps all of the dirt and crud and moisture out of that connector when it's not being, in, being used. So we need to go from this to the RV connector and let me show you how we do that. Now we'll have a green wire coming from the semi from the trailer side and we will bring this into the jackalope. There's a couple other wires that we're going to deal with at the same time. From different places we're going to have Backup lights. Now, backup lights are not in this green wire. Backup lights are going to be coming from elsewhere on the frame, and I'll show you where we get that from. So that's what this other connector provides us. There's a small pass-through for individual wires. We pull that through, and that's going to be connected over here on the right side. And we will also have our max brake feed. So this is the air over electric brake controller that I like to use. Of course, our trailers are using electric brakes. So this is going to be coming from the max brake controller that's located inside the cab. Now you'll see these wires are loose in here right now and when we tighten this down it creates a seal. It tightens those little holes down and all of these are filled up. You'll also see that I have one here that is not connected to anything. There's uh, the capability for bringing three wires through this connector. I'm not going to be using them right now. So put an extra wire in there just to fill the hole so that no moisture can possibly get inside this jackalope. On the trailer side, we're going to have a wire running along the frame and connecting to our trailer seven blade connector. So we're going to bring another wire in on that side. So of course we need to put blade connectors on each of these uh, wires. I myself like to use, uh, I've got a Thomas and Bet set that I keep filling up and using. They're a good quality one, so I'll use the proper gauge connectors. I don't need to show you this, but we'll, you know, of course, strip this wire 
Uh, I also recommend getting a good pair of strippers that have the right gauges marked on them so that you don't rip off too many of those wires. You keep as much current flowing through those as we can. We get those connectors on, connect them down to the right places on the board. Of course, this would be stripped and crimped. But we'll do that for all of these. I'll also show you that Henry's also supplied us with even a few others. Um, other than the backup in, there's some um, marker light connections that we can use and others. So I'm not going to be using those here. So again, I've put a short pieces of wire in there and just to fill the holes. I'll show you as well part of the great design of this. This can be mounted on the frame outside the truck and there's a whole bunch of indicator lights, LEDs, that Henry's designed into here. So when you're doing troubleshooting, if you have a wiring problem, the lid is clear. There is a rubber gasket on here to keep the elements out. It's very well sealed. But while you're trying to troubleshoot lights, you'll be able to have someone in the truck, you know, hitting brakes or hitting signals, and you'll be able to see the LEDs lighting up. All right, let's do a test. First we'll do some tests with just individual wires, but then of course what we're really looking to see is what happens when we have a combination of brake and signal lights at the same time. First, let's do just our brake lights. Pretty straightforward, as expected. Let's do just left and right. There's one signal light, let's do the other side. Now, here's the real test. We want to turn on brake, and we're going to do signal light at the same time. And the other side. So, our Jackalope works great. It's really an excellent product. Again, go visit Henry's website at ethitch.com and you'll be able to pick one of these up. And it saves you a lot of effort in trying to make your wiring work. I'll show you on the truck where we would actually place this either on the frame or inside one of the jockey boxes inside the cab and just where to find the backup lights and where we'll be running some of these wires and pulling source from. I want to show you where we would take our lighting source from. We're here at the back of the truck, we're looking at the back of the sleeper and usually right in this area you would find both air glad hand connectors as well as that round plug. Now what I've done on Jack's truck is I've moved it down here. It's just attached to the side of the frame. Now Jack is going to be doing his own wiring so really I'm not going to be doing anything permanent to this truck. He's taking care of it himself. But you look for this connection. A little bit hard, little bit hard to see because these wires get undercoated from the factory at Volvo. But you can see there's that green wire that we were looking for. So the truck side of the Jackalope would take its lighting source from this green wire. Now, sometimes on these trucks, we will put this Jackalope right here inside the frame. Now, but in this case, uh, Jack's truck is going to be getting a deck back here, the smart car loader deck. So that would be completely enclosed and really hard to deal with. So instead what we're going to do, or what Jack has chosen to do, is he's going to pull that wire up into one of the jockey boxes, or the tool boxes, behind the driver's side, and place the Jackalope in there. Let me show you where that is. So the place that I'm referring to on the driver's side of the truck is right here. It's this box. The way we gain access to those is here inside the driver's side likewise on the passenger side there's a ring and when you pull that it releases that door now you have to pull on this ring at the same time as you lift the door I'll try to do this with the camera so Jack already has Quite a bit of electronics he's going to be working with here. He's got his 3000 watt inverter as well as the power supply uh, for shore power. But what Jack would do is bring up the cable, that green cable, from underneath and place his Jackalope in here. And then, of course, the trailer return would go back down and come out of that location 
and run along the frame and back up to his hitch location that's going to be at the rear of the truck. Looking at the jackalope again, I also promised to show you where we were going to get the backup lights from, where that source is. Standing at the back of the truck, of course on this truck we've got some factory lights, one of which is the backup light, and there's a wiring harness right here. I want to point out usually these wires would run along this side of the frame. When we were rerouting the wires, we pulled everything along the left side. So normally, look for it along this side of the frame, and it's pretty easy to trace the wire from the backup light into the harness, watch the color coding, and see where it's pulled from here. This side of it is where I would recommend you pull your backup light from, just so that you're not ever worrying about this thing failing. Pull it from the, the actual wire itself, the source. Tying things together now. We've got the green trailer supply coming from the truck into our jackalope. Of course, we're going to place this wherever it's most convenient for you, either inside the frame or inside the jockey box, inside the sleeper. We've got a number of other power supplies or lighting supplies or sources coming into the jackalope as well, whether it's the backup lighting or the max brake or maybe a 12 volt switch supply. All of these wires that are running into the jackalope will spend some time outside the truck, whether they're coming from the backup light or the max brake. They should be inside some 3 8 split home. Buy a good quantity of that, you'll end up using it over time. It helps protect those wires from getting even the slightest nicks, which may lead to, lead to corrosion over time. Leaving the jackalope, we've got off our reel, we've pulled a, a quantity of new uh, seven wire cable that is running to our new RV connector that will be placed near the hitch location.